All right, well, good morning again, everyone. We're actually gonna start off with an icebreaker question in small groups. Um, how do you feel about COAST starting an in-person service? And do you think you'll attend in person next week on the 30th at 9.30? Or do you think you'll attend uh, online? So we're gonna go into small groups and discuss those two questions and we'll be back in five minutes. All right, well, hi again, everyone. Um, I think one thing that is gonna happen as we're moving in this direction is that we're going to be feeling a lot of different ways and we're going to make a lot of dis different decisions about what we're going to do and hopefully this is going to be a good experience for all of us and we're going to support each other in whatever decision you know each family decides to make um i've been feeling for me just really excited all week thinking how great it will be to see people that i haven't seen in months it was really fun just to see the staff we all met up on Tuesday at a distance and to see the park and to meet the park ranger and learn about their expectations for us and what they have available to help us out. The, the park ranger was super great and you know, answered all of our questions and shared a lot of details for us. Um, and then I spent a long, long time over at the park on Wednesday measuring out like six foot, like space is big enough for a family to be six foot distance from another family and kind of trying to mark out where all of the the seating is going to be and just a reminder on that note is please do remember to bring your own chair or blanket we plan to provide a few chairs for anybody who forgets or like just doesn't have a beach chair um, so we'll have a few there but do make sure to bring your own chair or your own blanket um, but when I was there on Wednesday, after getting to meet the park ranger on Tuesday, when I was there Wednesday, I got to meet the, the groundskeeper, the guy who keeps, who keeps the whole park absolutely beautiful. This park is the cleanest, most beautiful park. Um, so he clearly does a fantastic job of his job. And he was incredibly friendly and great to meet. And I met the two sisters who run the tea shop that's basically on the park property. So the, the park has a, uh, several old homes that have been preserved and inside one of those homes, which is basically on the lawn where we're going to meet, is uh, a little tea shop. The, the two sisters who run that are just also really wonderful. And uh, one of them spent a long time describing all of the different kinds of scones that they make and i was just drooling wishing that we could serve food we're not allowed to serve food so i can't just i can't buy you know a, a pile of those for everyone to try because we're not supposed to serve food at our at our service but they just really really sweet women um but then at the same time i'm also feeling pretty apprehensive you know hey is this really a good idea is this actually going to be safe enough uh, a note on that is that we are working really hard to make sure that the answer to that question is yes. I'm going to share some details on that a little bit later. Um, you know, but but I think for a lot of us, there is like a little bit of anxiety around that. Um, I'm also aware, hey, we're not going to be able to hug each other. We're not going to really lay hands on each other. It's not going to be the same as it was before COVID-19 hit. Um, in our one story journey through the bible we've arrived at a point when jerusalem has fallen to the babylonians and we see a very interesting message from the prophet jeremiah in jeremiah chapter 23 the the israelites have been taken into exile in babylon and Jeremiah gives this, them this message about seeking the peace or the shalom of the city during the time of exile. And I think that this is actually gonna be really helpful for us as we think about church meetings during the pandemic. So today's message is called the shalom of the city. And I'm gonna take just a minute to pray and we will launch into that. Holy Spirit, ask that you would come and be with us this morning. Lord, thank you so much for your many blessings, that even in the midst of so much chaos, that you have been so good to us. Lord, thank you for the beautiful city that we live in. Thank you for 
the lives and the health of everyone that's here. Thank you for the opportunity to meet in this stunningly beautiful park. And Lord, would you speak to us through your word this morning? We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So the people of Judah have been taken into exile. And many, many prophets had been saying this wasn't going to happen. You know, we're, we're going to be victorious over the Babylonians. And that turns out to be wrong. But then even after this does happen, and the people are taken into exile, most of the prophets are saying it's going to be really short. It's going to be a very short time, and we're going to return home soon. Soon this is all going to be over. It reminds me a little bit of the initial, you know, 15 days to slow the spread, right? You know, many of us felt like we knew all along it wasn't going to be that short. But I don't know about you, as a person who felt like I knew all along it wasn't going to be that short, I couldn't help hoping, hoping I was wrong, hoping it really would be that short. And instead, it's been, you know, five months and going. Um, but God spoke through Jeremiah, don't listen to these lying prophets. I haven't spoken to them. It's actually going to be 70 years. And he gave the people instructions for how to live during that time. And we'll read those right now. We're going to pick up in 23 verse 4. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Now, this seems initially a little bit counterintuitive. The Israelites have a home that's been promised to them through Abraham, handed down through the generations, and they have the promise that they're going back there. So you might think that the focus would be on home, on Israel, on returning to Jerusalem. And yet, God asks them to put their focus where they are, in Babylon. We're going to look at the, the scripture just piece by piece. We're going to break it down into three pieces and walk through. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. In other words, this is not going to be short. You can't just camp out here. Too long a wait for that. That would be a big waste of a lot of years. In fact, it's going to be so long that it's long enough to build homes, long enough to plant gardens. So invest in this place and in the life that you have. I think this is really useful for us. Um, living in exile from the garden until Jesus returns. But in, more, in a more immediate sense, living in San Diego, we are living in one of the most beautiful, amazing places on earth to live here. Many people come here to live from all over the world or long to come to live here from all over the world. And yet at the same time, for some of us, it really is a place that is far from home. And there is incredible grief over what's been lost. So for some of us, San Diego is still a form of exile. But for many others of us, this has been our home for most of our lives. Even in this beautiful place, um, the pandemic reminds me a little bit of the exile. You know, because we live in a time of great uncertainty where what's familiar to us has been stripped away. We live in a time of great loss. Now, for all of us, that involves not being able to do the things that we're used to doing. For some of us, it involves the much, much deeper loss of the lives of loved ones. We're in a time of separation, not being able to be with the people that we love and care about. We're in a time of waiting, waiting for things to go back to normal, 
and it seems to be dragging on and on. And I think for those of us who felt certain all along that it was going to be much longer, getting to say, I told you so is not very fulfilling. <laughs> I think all of us are thinking, wow, I would much rather have been wrong. And in a similar way to how it was for the exiles in Babylon who couldn't just camp out and wait the short period of time until it was time to go home. We can't just sit home and wait indefinitely for the pandemic to be over. It's already been too long for that. We have to engage life and mission. We have to engage what we've been called to here where we are. You know, in the springtime when our schools first went online, I have to confess that I was not super worried about it and I was not very diligent as a parent. Um, my kids were confused. They were having trouble with online school. But I thought to myself, you know, it's just a short time. It's just a couple months. And the school said that whatever happened during those couple months wasn't going to affect the year-end grades of our children. Um, and so I thought, you know, they're confused. They're struggling. Church, school is just trying to figure this out. It's going to be okay. But here we are starting a new school year, still online. And I'm starting to realize as a mom, you know, I can't continue to have that attitude forever. You know, even with getting off the watch list, we don't know for sure when school might start in person or if we might start in person and then go back online. And I'm starting to realize I need to get ready for fall. I need to gear up to be actively helping my kids a lot more than I did in the springtime. You know, and I think this is really similar with the church. And with our lives as a whole, as followers of Jesus, it was pretty easy in the beginning to say, okay, everything is canceled. We're still meeting. We're going to meet online and we're going to wait this thing out until things get back to normal. But many of us are starting to realize that we need to be engaging with our present reality and we need to be doing so with so much more intentionality and we need to be doing so for the long haul because we don't know how long this is going to be. Going back to our passage, marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. So not only will the exile be long enough to build a house and plant a garden, it's going to be long enough to see the next generation born and the next generation after that. So get married, settle down, for the first generation, this was going to be the whole rest of their lives. Now, in our case, we don't expect the pandemic will last the whole rest of our lives. Though I think we're aware that there could be some really lasting, significant changes to our reality. And we can certainly expect that things are going to be at least different for a long time. So for us, too, we need to build. We need to multiply. We need to grow. We need to invest in our long-term future. We need to invest in having spiritual children in the growth of the gospel message. You know, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about our witness. You know, where do we still interact with other people? What character are we displaying in these situations? Are we helpful and cooperative in every situation that we can be? Are we different in public and positive ways when we need to be? Are we taking advantage of opportunities to share about Jesus? Are we inviting people to come and to join us, even if we're meeting online? Whichever service you plan to attend next week, whether you're going to be on Zoom or in person, who can you invite to come and join us? And on the other days, when we're not gathering for church, with whom can you share just that you're a follower of Jesus? And how can you communicate what that means to you? How can we be on mission during this time of exile? Going on to the last part of the passage, also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. So if they're going to be living in Babylon, they're to invest in making it a really good place to live. Be good neighbors. Be known as good neighbors. They can't 
hold themselves apart from the other people around them because they're just waiting to go home. They have to invest in relationships with their Babylonian neighbors. The word here that's translated, the, the peace and prosperity of the city is the Hebrew word shalom, which means well-being on a holistic level. So the Israelites are being exhorted to invest in the overall thriving of the city in which they live. And this can also be really useful to us. I would say actually not just now, but always. We can't hunker down inside the church and wait for Jesus to take us home. We need to invest in relationships with our neighbors, particularly those that don't know God. And we need to invest in the shalom of our city. So one thing that I want to do right now is invite all of us over the coming weeks and months to be praying for God's eyes, listening for God's voice. Um, how are we being called to invest in the shalom of our city? You know, this is a question that's been on pause in many ways for a few years. And you know, we've gone through so much change at Coast and we've gone through so much loss. So many of our friends have moved on found new churches. And then after that, the pandemic hit. And in some ways, it kind of seems like we've been hibernating as a church. But a number of people have mentioned to me just in the last few weeks, you know, this is something that's just struck me in the last few weeks, how many people have brought this up just in a, in a short period of time, that they're sensing it's time to re-engage this question in a much more serious way. How is God calling us to bless our city? What unique purpose does God have for our church here in San Diego? And I want to invite all of you to begin to pray more deeply about this question as we start to look toward our future. Also, as we're getting ready to have our very first in-person meeting since March, we're going to be in a different neighborhood from where we usually gather. So let's think about how to bless our immediate neighbors in Old Town. How can we offer the best possible witness to them of the love of Jesus? Now, we don't know how long we're going to be there. Um, right now, this was actually the closest park to our usual meeting spot that was available. Uh, the, the county of San Diego made county parks available, and this was the closest one that we could find. We may have an opportunity to move closer as city parks open up uh, and make themselves available to church meetings. Um, we do expect to have the opportunity to use the school again eventually, but, but we don't know, you know how long that might be before something like that could happen. You know, we could be at this park for some time. We also don't know what's going to happen with the virus. We don't know how the virus will affect meeting in person at all. We could start meeting in person and have to stop. We could, we could see things improve and be able to do more and more. Um, Either way, whether this is going to be a, a short-term prospect or a long-term long prospect, let's not just camp out waiting to go home to LSE. <laughs> let's invest in relationships with our neighbors. Let's invest in our witness to those who are around us. One thing that I would love to see, let's have it be our goal that everyone who works or plays in or near Heritage Park would be overjoyed that we came to meet there and wonder about what it means to follow Jesus. You know, a couple practical ways that we can begin to do that. One, uh, be considerate neighbors. Uh, as, um, as Frank shared with us a little bit earlier, we are moving the service time, and that is both services. So just be aware that if you're coming to join us on Zoom, it's also at 9.30. We're moving both services to 9.30 a.m. because the, the tea house that is right on the park property there opens their doors at 11 a.m. And they have outside seating. And we just we want to make sure that there's no chance that we have any amplified sound when they are open. So usually we would meet at 10. You know, we would... We're shooting for a one hour service. So normally we would be done at 11, but we don't want to be ending, you know, right. We don't want to be ending while their customers are starting to arrive. We want to be done before their first customers arrive. And so we're going to plan to be finished at 1030. We might run over, you know, a few minutes, but we will not run anywhere close 
to 11 o'clock because we just want to make sure that we're the best possible neighbors that we can be to this tea house. Um, there are also rules about how loud we can be. We're going to be careful to follow those. And let's do our very best to leave the park cleaner than we found it. A note is that that could be fantastically hard. This is perhaps the cleanest park I've ever seen. Um, so so um, I mean, it really is. I think you guys are going to be so excited. It's incredibly beautiful. Um, so okay, maybe we can't leave it cleaner than we found it, but let's try. Let's at least leave it just as perfect as it was when we got there. Uh, a second thing, let's follow all of the public health recommendations. Let's go out of our way to be the most careful people around about these expectations. So in addition to bringing your own chair, and again, we will have a few extra chairs, and in, and, um, in addition to bringing your own chair or a blanket, at 9.30 at both services, um, please wear a mask with at least two layers. I'm, and no neck gaiters, please. No bandanas, please. We've been just reading in the news lately that those are just not quite as effective as a layered mask. You know, if you've watched any of the videos online, they're kind of showing where does your air go. And if you're wearing a neck gaiter or a bandana, your air just goes considerably farther. Um, than if you're wearing a layered mask. And because we are going to be singing, we do plan to sing together. Um, it's our understanding churches are not to sing indoors, but that we can sing outdoors. But especially because we plan to sing together, we want to make sure that everybody has a high quality mask. And we will have some extra masks if anyone needs one. If you don't have one or you forgot one, we're going to have extra masks on hand. If we have any visitors that showed up planning to go for a walk and not being within six feet of anyone, they don't have one, we have one for them. Um, so that's the first one. Wear a mask with at least two layers. The second one, keep six feet apart. Um, please no hugging. As much as we all love to hug each other, let's make sure we're not doing that. And notice if this is something that's hard for you, um, try this at home. Measure out six feet from between you and another person and just practice what it feels like to really be a full six feet apart from the other person that you are talking to. Now, I am not judging in any way whatsoever what any of us do on our own time, but at our service, let's please be really faithful in this. This is partly for each other. You know, we are all at different comfort levels with this thing. And we just want every single person who might like to attend to feel as safe as they possibly can. You know, I had a, an experience the other day. I was out in my, my cul-de-sac having a chat with one of my neighbors, a really delightful guy. But the, just as we're chatting, he keeps moving a little bit closer to me and a little bit closer to me, and a little bit closer to me, and I keep taking a step back, and then he moves in, and I take a step back, and he moves in, and I take a step back, and we're, we're gradually, you know, moving across the cul-de-sac from his side of it to my side of it, right? Um, how many of you guys have been in that situation? I think so many of us have described exactly that, that conversation that you have with someone whose boundaries just aren't quite where your boundaries are. And you keep, you want to talk to them. You want to be nice to them, but you keep feeling uncomfortable and backing up. Don't be that person. Just make sure that there is a zero risk in, when you're coming to the in-person service that you are that person. Um, we're going to have designated seating spaces and aisles in order to make it really easy that, so when you arrive, you'll be assigned a, a seating area. Um, that's just to make it really easy for us to all do social distancing for real. Um, and this is awkward to say, but I'm going to say it. We didn't write it in any of our pr printed stuff, but I'm going to say it right now while we're here together on Zoom. We will be asking anyone to leave that's not able to follow the guidelines. Um, it's, it's really important to us. Um, and again, this is partly for us, but it's also partly for our witness. It's also partly for all the people around us who are watching us. We don't want anyone passing by to think that we are not respecting the health guidelines that have been put out and imagine that we don't care for the lives and the health of our neighbors. Now, the Park Service has let us know that they're also very serious about this um, and that they are going to be observing us. They said, you know, we're not going to just hang out every Sunday and spy on you guys and look for you to be breaking the rules. but you know, but we, 
we are going to be aware of how you're behaving while you're there and you're not going to be allowed to meet there if you're not following the rules. So, so this is important to them as well. Um, let's make sure that we give no one any reason to complain about us to our hosts or to anyone else. Third, please do stay home if you're feeling sick in any way or if you're having any symptoms of COVID-19. And then lastly, you know, use your own judgment about kids. Um, I'm so sorry that we can't offer kids activities together at this time. I know our kids would so love to be able to do things with each other and to, to have something in person to touch and to hold. And, um, you know, but because it would be so difficult for children to social distance, at this time, we're not gonna offer kids activities. Uh, we are thinking that we'll probably have a, a separate youth group meeting in the future. We're not planning one for this week, but probably the following week. Um, but for younger kids, we're thinking that we can provide an activity sheet or a coloring sheet, something for your kids to do during the message, if that's helpful for them. Um, but if your kids can sit with you, uh, in your designated seating area the whole time, we would love to have them. I would be so happy just to lay eyes on your kids in person. Um, and again, we're shooting for one hour specifically because of our kids. We just want to make sure that the service doesn't go you know, so long that it's too hard for them to sit still. Uh, if you don't think that your kids can do that, please do leave them at home. Um, we love your high energy kids just as much as we always have. And... Uh, High energy kids will always have a really special place in my heart because I was that kid. You know? And a lot of times it was challenging for me. And I felt so grateful for all of the adults in my life that had patience with me, who loved me exactly the way that I was. And my two sons were those kids. Um, so high energy kids have a really special place in my heart and we're gonna miss them a lot. But we wanna keep everyone safe at this time. So if your kids cannot, you know, cannot sit with you in your designated space. Um, we ask that um, the last thing that we can do is support local businesses. If you're currently eating at restaurants with outdoor seating, and by the way, no pressure or judgment of any kind either way on this, uh, we are all You know, some of us want to be, are going to be meeting online. Some of us are going to be meeting in person. We're going to make a serious attempt to prioritize both. I really hope that the in-person service is actually going to be a big blessing to everyone who joins us on Zoom. Um, we're also all making different decisions on how much we're going out and under what circumstances we feel comfortable going out, what exceptions we're making to the rules, right? A lot of us are starting to form like little pods with other people where we're agreeing, you know, to see one another um, in circumstances that we're not going to see other people. Many of, many of us are visiting certain family members. Um, you know, so we're all making exceptions in situations that are important to us. And let's make sure that we are supporting each other and not judging each other in the choices that we're making at this time. You know, if comfortable at this time going to restaurants that have outside seating, I highly recommend go to the Coral Tree Tea House that is right there on the park property after church. I went there with my daughter, Rose, yesterday. Um, we had a really fun time. The, the women that run it are just really friendly, uh, nice women, so excited to have our service there. Actually, they were really positive. Um, the tea was absolutely delicious. Um, we had a marvelous time. You do need to make a reservation. Um, you can also just order scones to go. They have a whole bunch of delicious flavors and you can order scones to go, but you also have to do that ahead. Um, they open at 11 a.m. Also, hey, if high tea isn't your thing, so this is kind of a fancy tea party sort of a thing, if high tea is not your thing, go across the street to the tequila factory for Mexican food and margaritas. Um, there yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, or you might be able to think of some other ways that we can bless our neighbors. So let's just be thinking, how can we be a blessing to all of the people who are around us? Let's be a church family that's committed to investing in the shalom of our city and to doing so for the long haul. 
rather than doing a second breakout group today, I want to do a time of open prayer. I want us to obey uh, the teaching that we read right here from Jeremiah. You know, pray for the city. Let's pray for the shalom, for the peace and prosperity of San Diego. Let's pray for the neighbors around Heritage Park. Let's pray for those living near our homes or working with us. Let's pray for those who are poor, for the immigrants, for those who are lonely. Let's pray for hospital workers, people who are sick with the virus and their families. Let's pray for those who are going through financial hardship. Let's pray for people to meet Jesus. Let's pray for the shalom of our city.